Hello you guys, welcome back to another episode of the Crime with Kylie podcast. Now today's episode is a little bit different because it is a compilation episode. I don't know what it is. I Okay, hold on. Before we get started, this episode is going to have strong mentions of sensitive topics such as rape and sexual assault of minors because this episode is about teachers and counselors who have recently come out within the past, I want to say three months, for sexually abusing their students or their clients. And as to what I was about to say earlier, I don't know what it is. I don't know if this has been going on for a long time and more of them are just getting caught now thanks to social media or what is in the water because it seems like a lot of young female teachers in their early to late 20s, even early 30s, are being arrested and charged for sexually abusing their students or the kids they were supposed to be counseling. And with all these cases popping up, I kind of just wanted to put it out there, especially for parents and other teachers especially to see, to be aware that these things are going on. So this episode in particular is going to be very heavy on sensitive, graphic, and mature content. The teacher we're going to start with is a teacher who was just arrested last week. Adriana Rulin, age 27, was arrested on December 20th of 2023. Now Adriana was a teacher as well as a coach at Antonio Gonzalez Middle School. This middle school is located in Texas. She was first caught for what she was doing on November 27th of 2023 and it's thought that she was abusing this 13-year-old boy, a student of hers, since August of 2023. So how this all came to light is that the boy was out shopping with his parents and somehow the boy could afford something that costs $133. And he's a 13-year-old, so of course he doesn't have a job. So most of the money that he gets comes from his parents or, you know, things like birthdays, Christmases, when you get cards with money. So. His parents were very confused, his parents being his mother as well as his stepfather. And we're not using names here because this case involves a minor, so for his identity protection, all of the names are, except for Adriana's, are going to be private. So the mom and stepfather were very confused because they did not know where he got this money from. So they asked him, they're like, where, where did you get the money for this? And he said that he got it from some very close friends of his. Okay, his close friend should also be like 12, 13, maybe 14 years old. That doesn't make sense that his close friends would just like give him money. So his stepfather started going through the boy's cash app and he had some very strange reoccurring transactions. These transactions were from someone with the name Rulin and the profile picture was just of a dog. And these cash app transactions were pretty frequent. So then the stepdad starts going through the boy's text messages and he finds the name Adriana. And the name Adriana has some pink hearts by the name. And that is when he got really disturbed because these text messages, some of them were of sexual nature. And the stepdad decided to call this number from the boy's phone. So he's calling from the boy's phone and a woman answers and he's like, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? And the woman on the other line, Adriana, was obviously expecting the 13-year-old boy. And eventually, through the course of the conversation, she admitted that she was the 13-year-old boy's teacher from school. And during this entire phone call, it's kind of unclear, but essentially when this started to come out, when it was found out that the boy was getting money from Adriana and that Adriana was the teacher he was texting, he ran away from home. And from everything I've read and watched, it seems as though while he was running away from home, the stepdad was still on the phone with Adriana because I think the stepdad mentioned to Adriana that the boy ran away from home. So Adriana was then concerned and she was probably legitimately concerned, but it's also not her place with the crime she was committing against this 13 year old boy, as you're going to later find out in this video. So she was, telling the stepdad, hey, I want to come over. Can I come over and help find him? She wanted to help search for the 13 year old boy. And the stepdad was like, no, that's out of the question. So they hang up and then the stepdad went and he found the 13 year old boy and brought him home. Then because Adriana just kept calling the boy's phone over and over, that is when the boy's parents decided to file a criminal complaint against her. And the principal of the school was also notified of this. That is why Adriana is a former teacher and a former coach, she she was let go from the school for obvious reasons as we're going to find out. 
And the principal obtained um, screenshots of their text messages as well as the Cash App transactions. And Adriana was sending this boy pictures of her breasts, of her in a bikini, of like hickeys all over her body, and other compromising sexual photos. Additionally, she kept texting the boy that she might be pregnant. Like, she was having pregnancy scares because she raped a 13 year old boy. Adriana then like talks to the investigator and she's trying to ask the investigator for legal advice. And the investigator essentially told her like, no, I cannot give you any legal advice. I'm not going to do that. And at this point, like the proof's in the pudding. There's the text messages, there's the screenshots. It's known that she at least raped him 12 times, could be more, 12's on the, on the low end. And she would also get jealous and text him jealous text messages. Like he asked a girl his age for her Snapchat and then Adriana like angrily messaged him about that. Like it wasn't, he wasn't entitled to like go ask a girl his own age for her number, Snapchat, etc. Now as for the boy, I know we left off that the stepfather found him after he'd ran away that very same day within a few hours and brought him home. Now, the, the 13 year old boy did try to um, self harm after this all came out, after his, it, the inappropriate relationship with his teacher came out. And that must have been very hard on him because his, his brain's not developed, he's a child. Like, it, people from the school know, his principal knows, his parents know, like, and it, it's not his fault. And so be, because he did try to harm himself, he was sent to a nearby medical center near his home, but then he was transferred to a mental hospital. And even though this is all known, Adriana, for whatever reason, was allowed to have bond and she was allowed out on bond the very same day that she was arrested. So December 20th of 2023. So she's currently walking around free. Obviously there's conditions of her bond as there are with like most of these cases. They usually cannot have unsupervised contact with minors. They cannot try to contact the victim, etc. She was charged with, I believe, improper, like an improper relationship between educator and student and the student's a minor, which that was a second degree felony. Then the first degree felony was improper contact with a, a child under the age of 14, sexual contact in particular, which was a first degree felony, and then continuous sexual abuse to a child under the age of 14, which is a first degree felony. Now, seeing as though this case is so recent, a court date has not yet been publicly set for Adriana. So a summary for this case so far is that from August 18th to November 19th of 2023, Adriana had an inappropriate sexual relationship with the 13 year old boy. Adriana would repeatedly commit these sex acts against him at the school and she would send him many photos of herself of sexual nature. She would also get jealous if he had contact with any other girls his own age. She has admitted to guilt through her words and what she has said to the investigator. She has been let go from the school. The school set out a public statement which I will put on the screen that the investigation is still going on but Adriana has been let go from her teaching and coaching position. It is also currently unknown whether or not the 13 year old boy is okay enough to be home, whether or not he is in the mental hospital still or is at home with his family. Now this next case we know a lot more about and I have covered it so many times on TikTok, Instagram, etc. through short form content, but this is the case so far against Peyton Shires, who is 24 years old. She's from Ohio. She had just received her social work license in June of 2023, and she sexually abused one of her clients who was a minor. And she did this when she was employed at the National Youth Advocate Center in Ohio. Now this boy was also 13 years old, just like the boy in the last case that we talked about. And he was having issues with his mental health. So he was supposed to receive mental health counseling from Peyton Shires. And this all started to come to light on September 27th of 2023 when the boy's mother called the police. Now the mom was going through her son's phone and she found some very disturbing text messages from Peyton Shires. And these text messages were videos of Peyton Shires engaging in sex with her 13 year old son as well as other different sex acts. What I should call this is videos of Peyton Shires raping her son. 
because that's what it actually is. Because Peyton Shire is a 24 year old grown woman, married by the way, who also has a child, was raping a 13 year old boy who she was supposed to be providing mental health counseling to. So immediately his mother takes these videos, takes the text messages to the police. And on a three way call with the mother, Peyton Shires, and an officer, Peyton Shires admitted to it. She admitted to all of it. And what's even stranger about all of this is that the mother first went to the National Youth Advocate Program with concerns about Peyton Shires a few months prior to this coming out because she had a bad feeling about Peyton Shires and potentially an inappropriate relationship going on. And she asked that they would change the counselor that her son was seeing and they refused. They also did not look into Peyton Shire's background or anything like that whatsoever. They did not do an investigation at all despite the mother's concerns. And they really should have done a background check because they would not have found that Peyton Shire's had anything legal against her previously, but they would have found out that the man that Peyton Shire's married was actually in prison for four years for the rape of an underage girl. However, okay, so that's what the man was accused of. That's what he was initially charged with. However, I believe he took a plea deal, which kind of got that charge changed to like sexual misconduct or like inappropriate relations with a minor. So he was in prison and he's a pedophile and then she married him and then they had a child together. And then Paige Shires became a pedophile herself or maybe she was the entire time. So they did not, the National Youth Advocate Program definitely failed here. And that is why the mother and son are now also suing the National Youth Advocate Program as well as Peyton Shires. Because that program is designed for protecting and helping families and children. And it kind of did the opposite by hiring Peyton Shires. So that rant over, um, Peyton Shires was actually let out on bond for the first time on October 12th of 2023. She posted a $500,000 bond. However, she was arrested just a few days later on October 26th of 2023. Why was she rearrested? Oh, she violated the terms of her bond and then decided to commit another crime altogether. So as we mentioned with the last video, especially when it comes to cases like these, terms of the bond are usually you cannot come in contact with the victim, you cannot have unsupervised contact with minor, minors, etc. So she came over to the boy's house where him and his mother lived with a gun and Peyton Shires started threatening to kill the boy's mother and also kill herself. And she actually fired a shot and this was all captured on, I don't know if they had a ring camera or some sort of security camera on their home, but this entire thing was filmed. So there's no denying that Peyton Shires violated the first term of her bond by going over to the victim's house. And then secondly, threatening them with a firearm Third of all, actually firing the firearm. So because of all of that, Peyton Shires was rearrested and now she's being held without bond, which I think they should have done in the first place, to be honest, because there was literal evidence. Like the videos, she admitted it verbatim over the phone, in person, the videos and photos of her raping the 13 year old boy. Like how, how is that not something you hold someone for without bond? Like they are clearly a threat to children. Anyways, um, Peyton Shires now being held without bond, she got two new charges against her. The two new charges were like intimidation of a witness, two charges for that on top of like the uh, sexual assault charges that she received. And although she's now being held without bond, her social work license has not yet been revoked. Now we're going to go over a few more details of Peyton's personal life, as in her husband slash fiance, her child, and her own social media posts. So her husband slash fiance, some sources say husband, some say fiance, so one or the other, she's with him, they have a child together. His name is Nicholas Rafter. And if you're curious about his initial charges, his initial charges were rape, sexual battery, and unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. And those were connected to the crime he committed against a 14 year old girl in 2015, November of 2015. For those nine months, he was held in Marion Correctional Institute in Ohio. And rape is a very intentional crime in itself, but to make matters worse, the 14 year old girl was unaware of what was happening because he had drugged her. He had knowingly drugged her and then knowingly raped her. And 
the only thing that he actually got convicted of at the end of the day was child endangerment, and I cannot believe that he only served nine months in prison for that. That is absolutely disgusting, and I hope that that is reevaluated. Now, along with the nine months that he spent in prison for the child endangerment charges, he was actually supposed to spend another four years and 11 months in prison, and those years, that sentence was actually for burglary. So he actually got out early and he was released in August of 2017. Then it was only two years after his release that he started dating Peyton Shires. And the other weird connection between Shires and Rafters is that they actually both have the same lawyer. So the lawyer that represented him in his case is now representing Peyton Shires. Additionally, going through Peyton Shires' social media, now everything's pretty much like wiped clean. She made a post about how much she hated pedophiles and that Pedophiles who aren't dead can reoffend, and this post was in support of the death penalty. So, I guess justice in her eyes for this case would be like her and her fiance, like both going to the chair, both getting a lethal injection. I don't know. That was just something that really stood out to me. That was like, how? Like, how can you believe this or say that you believe this? Make a public post about this, and then go and do the exact opposite like go do the thing that the post is saying like don't do with all of the charges against her and despite all the evidence including her admitting to everything peyton shires is pleading not guilty to all charges don't know how that's going to play out for her because there's video evidence of both the incident with the gun as well as her actually raping the 13 year old boy so that's probably not going to go over well for her and as for the child the one year old child and i believe he's a boy that is shared between Nicholas and Peyton Shires, I, I hope that baby is well and hopefully someone else, a grandparent or someone else, like, ends up raising him right because being raised by two pedophiles sounds, it's, it's honestly, it, it, it scares me for that child. And as I mentioned earlier, the mother and the son are suing both Peyton Shires as well as the National Youth Advocate Program and they're suing them for $500,000 each, so $100,000 in total. 